Today marks 30 years since Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web, submitting his proposal for an information management system. During that time, the web, which runs on, but is often referred to as, the Internet, has evolved from a concept to something on which civilization is heavily dependent, from how we communicate to how we buy, even to how we form relationships. The web plays a pivotal part in our everyday lives. Berners-Lee adopts the role of a Dr. Frankenstein in relation to his most famous creation, telling the BBC that it marks a downward plunge to a dysfunctional future. Ian Kilpatrick, strategic advisor for cybersecurity at Nuvias, agrees with Berners-Lee that the bad often outweighs the good. When the web saw mainstream adoption in the 90s, Kilpatrick went on record arguing that it's not structurally secure and is open to attack. Twenty-odd years later, he is still of the same opinion. We have the same fundamental vulnerabilities of the Internet today as we had then, he explained. We just have more ways of being attacked now, and that can come from anyone, they don't even need basic skills anymore. They can just go on the dark web and buy products that allow them to with little effort. He believes that the only way to prevent the web's downward dive into dysfunction is to place certain filters on it, similar to those which countries such as China and Russia have in place, but far less censorious, although he admits this might be bolting the stable door after the horse has bolted. Some of the stuff about putting filters around it might help but the Internet of Things, IoT, is going to make it much worse, he added. Everybody, individuals and businesses, will be leaving themselves open to attack by fitting the smart product into the network, but not securing it. I think there will be a move in the decade after next, where we will essentially seal ourselves off within the Internet. Civilization today is totally dependent on the Internet, something that is fundamentally insecure and vulnerable to many things. Jonathan Lassman, MD at Epiton, agreed with Kilpatrick's assessment, calling the web a scary place. We have got homes being ed, major corporates getting ed and that is happening only because they are connected to the Internet, he stated. There's still a complete lack of knowledge on how to secure yourself online. It is 30 years old but people still don't know how to protect themselves and how much they should protect themselves online. We need to understand our security posture, whatever we put in place the earth will find a way around it so I don't think it will become any safer in the future. Howard Hall, Group Managing Director of DTP said that the buying cycle is the area which has seen the most impact from the web. In recent years it has changed the buying cycle with end users. They are doing a lot of product and services research themselves now, he explained. In the past, customers relied on salespeople to come to them and introduce them to new products and ideas, and that might be their first introduction to certain brands. But now the reseller and vendor are coming in much later in the buying cycle because customers are now doing that research themselves. In his personal blog, UK Fast MD Lawrence Jones mused over the fact that he established his company only a decade after Berners-Lee submitted his proposal. When we started UK Fast 20 years ago, our mission was to help educate people about why they should be online, he wrote. Now, we're working to help people make the most of their online presence and keep people safe online, both personally and professionally. It's our responsibility to do so. It's now time for the big global tech players to shift their focus. Facebook, Twitter, Google. Amazon and Co. are obliged to protect the users of their sites but it does seem to be out of control, you only need to scroll through a popular post on any given social network to see the raft of negative, nasty and often abusive comments left by trolls. It's a toxic environment and one that I can't imagine growing up in. It's a challenging world to navigate for our young people and there's no precedent for them to follow. Ian Moyes 
EMEA director at cloud telephony firm Natterbox, agreed with Jones but argued that it's not the web itself that prompts this antisocial behavior, but the way people interact with it. There is nothing wrong with the tech but the fact that it needs policing around it, he said. We see the good first and regulations and the law don't move at the pace they need to in order to cover the world that we now live in. We don't know what the future holds for the internet, but every bit of information that you put on it is out there to come back on you. We need to figure out how to use technology to better manage the bad bits of the internet.